Oh, it's me, Dr. Z, welcoming you to season three of Hanging with Dr. Z. We'd like to thank you for being so patient with us in between seasons. This last break was a little longer than we'd planned. Unfortunately, I had to take a little hiatus and paint the bottom of Connie Stevens' swimming pool because of an accident that is ironically directly attributed to Connie Stevens' ambrosia salad. But we're back. Thanks for watching. From deep in the heart of the San Fernando Valley, it's Hanging with Dr. Z with Rusty Steel and the Steel Wheels. Tonight, Kevin Pollock. This monkey means business. The doctor will see you now. Hey. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Stop it. Stop all that noise. Thank you very much. Hello, good evening. I'm Dr. Z, and this is Hanging with Dr. Z. Welcome to the show. This is Rusty Steele and the Steel Wheels over here. Oh. Oh. Okay. I'm all right. Are you getting used to the new setup? It's a little weird. We have a new set. We have a whole new set. We went on a little break. Yeah. Did you have a good time on the break? Did you do anything fun? Yeah, no, no, I didn't. I didn't have fun. I didn't do anything. That's the can-don't attitude that I love from you. <laughs> that would just see Guardians of the Galaxy. Did mm. you see Guardians of the Galaxy? No, no, no. Chris Pratt's the lead actor in Guardians of the Galaxy. And when he was on Parks and Rec, he was great. He was just a big, dumb, goofy guy. And then he got a movie star, and now he's all cut and muscular and ripped. But even movie stars didn't used to look like that. I was home the other night. I was uh, by myself, living my best life, flipping channels on the old boob tube. <laughs> and what's on? Diamonds are forever. Ooh. Remember that, the old James Bond movie? James Bond. And mm -hmm. Sean Connery is James Bond in Diamonds Are Forever. You'd think he'd be in amazing shape. But no. There's a scene in Diamonds Are Forever where he takes his shirt off and he comes out of the room and he looks like my dad after a tray of lasagna <laughs> from Russia with lunch. Are you excited about the show tonight? Don't I look excited? You have a Sterling Hayden sense of giddiness tonight. <laughs> we have comedian and actor Kevin Pollack is here tonight. He's on The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. And then later in the show, uh, sort of a patriotic moment, comedian Marty Allen is going to be out here to read from the Federalist Papers in a thick Chinese accent. <laughs> We're all very excited, so please stick around. We'll be right back. Hello, folks. Michael Caine here. You know, when people look at me, they often say, those are bloody large glasses, Michael. And I tell them, exactly. Michael Caine, bloody large glasses, new from Fuxley. Believe you me, I know a thing or two about giant glasses. They're about power, aren't they? And they're about the bloody powerful blokes who wear them. I'm one of those bloody powerful blokes, aren't I? But any bloody powerful bloke can wear them, not just me. Big stars like Lee Marvin, Sean Connery, Charlie Bronson, and mine and everyone else's favorite, Wit Bissell. Michael Caine's Bloody Large Glasses by Fuxley. Available at your neighborhood Foxhall drive-through eye care centers. I'll see you there. She's sweet as a peach, but full of mites, and I can't have that in the secretary. Oh, good. We're back. My first guest tonight is a, is a dear, uh, a dear friend of mine. Uh, he, Jack Lemon, and myself used to be known as the Three Musketeers, if you were a member of the Brentwood Country Club. But if not, you can see him in such films as A Few Good Men and Avalon. He's been on such shows as Better Things on FX and The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel on Amazon Prime. And he has a new podcast coming out called My Mrs. Maisel Pod. Please welcome my best friend, your best friend, and the man that makes your mom smile and your dad wonder, Mr. Kevin Pollack. How are you today? Thank you so much for most of that. <laughs> sure. Uh, 
Please be seated. So great to see you I haven't you again. been at the country club in a while, so this is nice. It was always amazing that I would see you there because it's still restricted, which I find <laughs> fascinating for this time of the year. <laughs> to that end, you've got a camera there and a camera there. Yes. Is there something in your past mm. that you feel that you should make public and get ahead of it? Uh, get ahead of it as in... Uh... It's going to come out. <laughs> now's a good time. <laughs> okay. Take the opportunity. Uh... You're in The Usual Suspects. Yes. Which is a film that was directed by Brian Singer. Correct, continue. Uh, starring Kevin Spacey. Odd Jews for 400. As the Hollywood Vice Squad calls them, come and comer. They're in the movie. I tried to watch my DVD of it, but I couldn't get it out of the evidence locker. I... <laughs> How much of your own IMDb can you now not mention? Remind me to tell you on this coffee mug where Kevin Spacey tried to touch me. <laughs> in the asshole. You know what his crime is? Please tell Here's me. Here's my camera. <laughs> Kevin, you're in love with love. And that's no crime. That's the sweetest thing I've ever heard. Speaking of, uh -huh. that was a perfect segue. You didn't even know it. And that's why you're the pro you are. I have guests come in here. Right. And they think that I'm their friend. And they sit there and they blather. And they plug and they plug and they preen and they talk about their thing. And I just sit there and I go, if Kevin Pollack was behind that curtain, yeah. I would rip you in half with my bare hands to get him in that chair. <laughs> but I don't have that option. But I want you to know, when you see the show and you're not on it, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. <laughs> By the way, when I watch the show, that's what I'm thinking. That's what you're thinking. <laughs> Indeed. Why won't he rip this person in half so I can be there? In the past few years, we've yeah. lost, my God, David Brenner, Louis Anderson, Gilbert Gottfried, uh, Bob Saget, Norm MacDonald. Do you think Jay is murdering the competition? Listen, uh, I, I wasn't necessarily there, but I mean, I was in the vicinity. I have a lot of cars, so chances are I drove by. That's the thing. Jay Leno has a warehouse full of cars. Yes. David Letterman, I believe, also. And Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld also has a warehouse full of cars. Airplane hangar. They're going to keep buying cars till they make one that hugs them. <laughs> Listen, I had the other way. My mom, we called her the sun. The rest of us were mere planets revolving around uh -huh. her. She uh, inspired me to be funny. And before I thought that was even a possibility, she uh, was insisting. That's a big Jewish mother thing. It's, it's an orangutan mother thing, too. Is it? I have friends, and there's always that question that, like, eh, I should ask them that. Maybe I shouldn't. Oh, I you can ask me anything. Okay. Would you, for the right amount of money, yes. kill Jason Robards with a hammer? <laughs> yes. Who would you mm -hmm. kill with a hammer? You know you can get away with it. For no money. For no money. In show business. I think Buddy Epson. The devil in Me, 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 me. You know who out of glasses and the little hat is a knockout? Irene Ryan. Oh, man. You don't who? see that coming. It's like Charlize Theron, and then she puts the glasses on, and oh, my <laughs> God, it's the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> you ever heard the story that uh, Elvis Presley and uh, Anne Margaret on the set of uh, Viva Las Vegas had an affair? Yes. So it's Elvis Presley at his peak. Sure. And Margaret at her peak. And Peace. they had an affair. Uh -huh. I think it's outrageous that people continued to have sex after that. No, it's done. <laughs> There's no reason to try There's this no again. To, they're, you're not going to win. <laughs> I remember you mm. on The Tonight Show mm. with Johnny mm -hmm. before the septum replacement. Right. Explaining to him yes. how to do Bill Clinton. Yes. And it was a combination, a combination of Elvis Presley and... Jimmy Carter. And Jimmy Carter. That's right. First you start with Elvis, and, and then you get up real high with uh, Jimmy Carter, and then you settle right in between there, and you got yourself Bill Clinton. He just went out at yeah. that. Yeah, a little more so than you right now. Johnny. Rusty's Preston. dealing with some stuff right now. I got a lot happening. I yeah. wonder if towards the end, Johnny ever realized that he wasn't on a show. Like, I imagine them <laughs> driving him home towards the end, looking at the people on the beach going, when are they on? <laughs> Not knowing that there's a world outside the show. He was out at sea. Do, do I own all these people? <laughs> do I own this? Which one's Doc? <laughs> Where's this Doc? I, I had practiced 
uh, as a teenager walking through the curtain on The Tonight Show in a fantasy and waving to Doc before I went to sit down because I'd seen so many people I admired sure. do it. Sure. That when I finally got my first uh, time and I was going to go through that curtain, I had to convince myself, don't wave to Doc. You don't know him. The audience knows this is your first time. You're, Johnny's yeah. telling them that. Don't be that asshole. All I cared about was being asked back so I could wave to Doc. And you, and you, did, wave to, and you did wave to Doc. Yeah. And he didn't see you because he'd been smoking jazz cigarettes. <laughs> do you believe in ghosts? I do. Have you ever had an experience with a ghost? I have. Do, do tell. <laughs> well, uh, I was working uh, stand-up mm -hmm. back in the old days. Uh, we had just invented fire. Before everybody was woke. <laughs> <laughs> it was at a club, and uh, the, the, uh, there was an attic, and I was dared to go up and, and use it as my dressing room. And uh, that's where I first met a ghost. Really? Yeah. Did it look like an apparition, or? Looked like a Jew. It was fairly obvious to me immediately that this ghost was Jew. Again with the living. <laughs> Stop with the breathing already. I was always very uh, open-minded about things. If they happened, they happened. If they didn't, they didn't. But I never specifically believed in anything. Okay. I used to live in Judy Garland's old house. One night, she appears to me in an apparition, goes into the bathroom, takes all my sleeping pills, died all over again. <laughs> <laughs> On brand. Yes. <laughs> Oh, thank you for coming, my friend. I will see you this Sunday at the first rehearsal for Battle of the Network Stars. Kevin Pollack, ladies and gentlemen, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Tomorrow night, historian Doris Kearns Goodwin will be talking about her new book, An Oral History of the Musical Group, Guar. And we will see you then, Rusty. Play us out of here.